this morning here at the Luther Christian United Methodist Church. So we'd like to welcome all those joining us online. Let's all stand together and would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for your presence here with us. And Lord, despite our, regardless of our circumstances, Lord, we come to you joyful that we are able to come together as a, as a family to worship you, Lord. So God, would you be lifted high? Would you be glorified in the midst of, your, in the midst of this gathering? And may our worship be pleasing to your sight. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Christ, let me pray. Amen. Oh, 
give you praise and glory for you are great. So Lord, may this song come from the bottom of our hearts and may this song be pleasing to you, to you alone.
Amen. Well, welcome once again. Let's go ahead and say hello to our neighbors as we get seated this morning. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Okay. How is everybody this morning? Thank you. Um, man, what a great song. Nothing. I mean, I can't add to that. Um, welcome. We are so glad everybody's with us today. Um, your bright, shining, beautiful faces this morning. We're so glad to see everybody. Um, if you haven't got a donut, you better get over there quick because there's only one or two left. The United Women of Faith um, had their yesterday, and they uh, brought over um, um, Sam Finger yesterday. So um, they're over there too. So grab some of those coffee, juice, water, everything. Make yourself at home and grab some. Um, if you're watching online, thanks for checking in with us and watching. Whether it's this morning or just later in the week, we're glad you're joining us online. So um, if with that, if you're here in person, grab those black pads that are on the end of each row. Fill them out, pass them down so everybody can um, grab one. If you're watching online, you can click the link in the information box below the video and go to the online registration form there and uh, fill that out and let us know you're here. Um, as we prepare for our offering this morning, um, we want to um, bring somebody up. Um, if you haven't met her, you need to. Um, you've seen a little bit of your worshiping and singing on a lot of Sunday mornings with Dad, um, but Lucy... Lee is going to come up and give us a word about our nursery in, uh, up in the, uh, in the other wing um, that is there for all of our children in our events. And Lucy Maddie goes up there a lot and spends time in the nursery. So Lucy's going to share a word with us about our nursery. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Um, okay, so this week's ministry moment is for the church nursery. We just wanted everyone to know that there is an excellent nursery here in the church staffed with long-term, highly trained employees. I, a lot of the times, go to them and seek guidance on certain things, so that's been very helpful for me. Um, they provide loving care to the children as well as plenty of toys games, puzzles, and outdoor time when the weather um, is cooperating, unlike today. <laughs> they are available Sunday mornings for the 8.30 and 11 o'clock worship service for children under, kid under the kindergarten age and also at 9.30 during Sunday school if the children are too young to attend class. Um, the nursery is also here on Wednesday evening, so the parents can go to various classes or Bible study and leave their little ones in good hands. Additionally, there are many events held throughout the year where nursery is available. These events may include choir concerts, speakers, ladies' teas, and other family activities. We hope that you will come and visit the nursery with your child whenever the time is right for you. Thank you. We good? There we go. I'm gonna have to order a new cable, I guess. We're having trouble with our um, mic. Stay put. 
Um, these are going to be important later, but I'm having, Luke's having trouble staying on the table, so um, <laughs> we got to keep him glued down. Um, so with that, you heard our nursery, one of the, the ministries that you make possible through your faithfulness and your uh, generosity. So as I keep that in mind as we prepare that all of the things that happen here that you make possible as we prepare our hearts and our minds for our time of giving through our offering in praise of God is our act of worship. Um, as we prepare for that time. I would ask that those that are assisting with our offering this morning um, to come forward at this point. I'm not going to repeat what I just heard come from over there. Um, would you join me in a moment of prayer as we prepare for our, this act of worship? Gracious God, this morning, thank you for um, all that you do for us. Lord, for the blessings that you bestow on all of us, we thank you. And as our act of worship this morning, we come before you humbly with our gifts to share back a portion of all that you have shared with us. And our prayer this morning would be that you would bless each heart and each gift and place them in the hands of Jesus, multiply them like the bread and the, 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 bread and the fishes beyond anything we could ever imagine for the ministries of this church and the expansion of your kingdom. We thank you. Lord, and we pray this in the name of your precious and your holy son. Amen. Um, I'm going to share before I ask for prayer requests because I was like super surprised this morning, but so, so happy. Um, we got a praise this morning. Lisa Marvel back with us this morning. And I know she's... Um, I know at some point I'm going to pay for, for, um, for, yeah, she's back there going, yes, you are, um, for singling her out, but we've missed her, um, and everything is going well so far. Um, she's a little frustrated with the, uh, the um, how do I be nice about this, uh, the incompetence of the medical field right now, um, so I feel you. So just to continue to be in prayer for Lisa and the family and um, as they wait for some results still um, and some appointments that go along with that. But it's so good to see you, Lisa. So glad you're here. She is out of ice cream. So if anybody wants to make a resupply run for only from Brewster's, only from Brewster's, and it has to be sea salt caramel or, Casey, what's the other one? Butter pecan, sea salt caramel or butter pecan from Brewster to the Marvel home. It will be, she told me, she said, I've eaten it all. She said, I've eaten all you've given me and uh, um, everybody, how much ice cream was there? A lot, Will says. It's, it's gone now, so Lisa's so good to see you. Um, any other concern for the people of Mississippi? Um, we certainly want to keep the folks of Mississippi in our prayers. The people of LaGrange this morning, tornado was in the ground um, in LaGrange um, down South Georgia. Uh, Michael, what else you got? LaGrange? I'm sorry. I, stole I quit doing that. Uh, Ramona. Oh. Andrea Ware's daughter, uh, neighbor's daughter um, passed away. How old was she? Oh, 30? Oh. Oh, from brain tumor. Oh. So we keep that family in our prayers. Any others? I do want to celebrate. Um, I haven't seen it yet. I saw one last week or two weeks ago. Um, we've got a young man from our church that is playing um, Division I lacrosse at Johns Hopkins University, Patrick Deans. Um, the dude is scoring goals. In, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. Um, but Michael and um, Jay back there and little sister Samantha, Michael sends me updates and videos every now and then. I haven't got to watch the one from today. Did he score another goal? Sweet, he scored another one. Way to go, Patrick. Um, so I try and keep touch, live my life vicariously as a wannabe athlete through Patrick that Michael sent me these videos. Um, so I want to celebrate that. Yes, ma'am. Linton Jones, the husband of Jan Jones, one of our staff members, um, 
I don't know how much I should share. He had to go to the ER uh, last night. That's, that's where I'll leave because that's all the information I have right now. So um, stay in prayer for Linton Jones and Jan. Any others? Are you shaking your head because you have another one or you're just? Okay, okay. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious God, thank you um, for all that you do for us. And we would just pray this morning that your Holy Spirit would overflow this place and overflow each heart. And Lord, may we keep in our prayers and remember and ask for your loving arms to surround these folks that uh, from Mississippi and from LaGrange and any others that these storms may affect over the last couple of days. That you would um, provide them some peace, some comfort, some hope um, through these tough times. And may they look to you and realize that you are with them every step they take and every breath that they breathe. Lord, for all those um, concerns we have raised up this morning and all those ones we all bring with us that remain silent, that you know about, we would ask that your healing hand rest upon all of those. Um, Lord, we thank you for our celebrations. We thank you for Lisa Marble being back with us this morning. And for the upcoming doctor's appointments and, and test results, we keep those in our prayers. And Lord, now we would ask that you um, would be with this place today and that your word would be heard and that you would bless the reading and the hearing of your word this morning. And Lord, may we look to you and you alone for our strength, for our comfort, for our hope, and for our redemption and salvation. Lord, we pray all of this this morning in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. with me this morning. Y'all saw how uncomfortable I was last week with this in my hand, so we're going to give it another shot till we get fixed. From Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21, we're going to finish up chapter 5 today in our journey through Romans. Um, you get a break next week. It's Palm Sunday, so we'll be looking at something besides Romans next week, and then we'll jump right back in. But um, our, our passage today, Paul says, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Remember that line, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for <coughs> excuse me, if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, aband, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we read that text, and it gets a little confusing, at least for me, it does. So I hope this morning that you wore your big girl and big boy theological pants uh, this morning, because we're, we're, this is going to be um, a little bit 
challenging. Um, and hopefully you got those pants on, you got your belt cinched up tight, and we're ready to go because this is going to be fun. Nothing to be scared about, okay? Just a lot to take in in one morning. If you remember in chapter 4, um, Paul used the story of Abraham to show how Abraham's life illustrates justification by faith. And now, here in chapter 5, Paul is going to go back even further to show how even Adam's story, Adam's story sets up the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's going to show that all of history can be told as the story of two Adams. And how this really does upset the apple cart of the day and the thinking of the day and even some thinking today. So I'm going to ask this question, and I think to the, the Smith family. Um, how, we have any Star Wars fans in here today? Anybody a Star Wars fans? Um, I know the Smith family back there is. That's why I went them to ask for a favor, and John and Sam loaned me some of their stuff this morning. So I see a lot of Star Wars fans. I have got um, Darth Vader up here, who was, before he was Darth Vader, he was? John Smith, who was he? Anakin Skywalker, right? It was Anakin Skywalker. So I've got Anakin with me, and I have got Luke Skywalker with me, and he needs to really stay put. So um, the, the, do any of you know, did you know this, that Star Wars has been called by some people the tale of two Skywalkers? Anybody familiar with this? Eric Smith is in the back one. I got gotcha. you. The tale of two Skywalkers. The first Skywalker, Anakin, okay, gave into, tempta into temptation to embrace the dark side, and by doing that, he brought death and destruction and chaos onto the entire galaxy. Correct? Okay. The second Skywalker, which was who? Luke. Luke Skywalker faced the same temptation, but he was faithful and obedient to the Jedi way. And because of that, he was able to reverse the curse that came from the disobedience of the first Skywalker and even to redeem the first Skywalker, Anakin. Even to redeem the first Skywalker. George Lucas, who wrote Star Wars, said that the central theme of episodes four through six was the redemption of Anakin Skywalker by Luke Skywalker. The central theme for those three episodes. In the same way, we can say that the entire theme, the entire storyline of the Bible is about the redemption of the first Adam by the second Adam, Jesus Christ. That's what's happening in our text today from Paul. Adam, the first human created, chose to defy God's authority and reject God's clear command to avoid the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But because of the choice to disobey and go to that tree anyway, death descended on all people. Now, big theological term, church word, church term here. Don't get scared. That brought about, this is called the doctrine of original sin. Verse 12, therefore just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all have sinned. In other words, we all sinned in Adam. Now if you're like me, you're going to be saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, that's not fair. That is not fair in the least. I wasn't there, I know I'm old, but I'm not that old. I wasn't there. I wasn't consulted about this. There was no committee meeting. I didn't get a vote. How can I be held responsible for something that I had no part in? Because the effects of this choice were not insignificant, correct? Death passed to us all because of this choice. Every disease, every natural disaster, every painful struggle with cancer, every child born with a birth defect, every divorce, every rape, every war, every case of abuse, it all goes back to this choice made by Adam and Eve. So how is this fair that we suffer the consequences of this? We were never even close to being there. In calling Adam our representative, God is saying, I hated writing this down. 
But God is saying with Adam as our representative, he knew that what Adam chose is what each of us would have chosen if we would have been there and have, would have been given the choice. Does that make sense? God is saying with Adam as your representative, I am saying if you would have been there, you would have made the same choice that Adam made. Think about it. Think about it. And I'm guilty of this. You cannot even keep Oreos in your house without being tempted. I went to Costco the other day with my wife and found something that I almost fell on the floor. I stood there, mouth agape, staring, pointing at a bag of Girl Scout Thin Mint Chocolate Covered Pretzels. Yes, some of you are like, oh, how have I not known about this before now? <laughs> they are awesome. They are awesome. I highly, not if you want to keep this under control, but I highly recommend them. We can't even keep things like that in our house without being tempted. Yet you think you could have resisted the temptation from, to eat from a tree that promised you godlike power and knowledge? Please. And yet we'll still say, but I didn't make the choice, so it doesn't seem fair to be held accountable for something that I didn't choose. But if we're being completely honest, hasn't there been a time in all of our lives that we have proven God correct in his thinking? I know better than God. I would rather do what I want to do than what God plans for me and wants me to do. How many times in our lives have we known what the right thing to do was only to do the exact opposite? So even though we weren't physically present with Adam, we have all proven that we would have done the same thing that he did. And the result of that choice, Paul says, is that death spread to all people. And this means both physical death and spiritual death. And even if we struggle with why original sin works the way it does, we at least have to concede the presence of its effects. Everybody dies. Everybody. Despite all of our technology, the death rate in the human race still stands at 100%. Death and disease affect everyone. Nice people as much as cruel people. Smart people as much as ignorant people. Rich people as much as poor people. Innocent and infants as much as adults. And this spiritual death means that we're all born into a position of rebellion towards God. We can't help it. I've said it before, we are all born not able to not sin. We're born with that nature. And as parents, we all know this. Kids come out of the womb sounding like the seagulls from Finding Nemo. Mine, 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 mine. Don't look at your children. Has anybody's 18-month-old ever shown gentleness and selflessness? Has any of them ever come to you and said, Mom, Dad, you look like you've really had a rough day. Why don't you just put me in my room and go take some you time for yourself? This happened to Joanna and I exactly zero times. We never had to send either of the Birchett girls to sin camp to learn about sinning and how to do it better. They didn't have to go to selfishness seminars. They came by it instinctively. They learned every bit of it from their mother. <laughs> I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Do not pan the camera over toward Joanna. Do not. I'm joking. Who's the one that stays more in trouble between the two of us? It's not her. So even if we don't understand the logic of original sin, we at least have to admit that we see the effects of it in the world surrounding us. That we are all born with that nature. And I know that this sounds like a lot of really bad news, but in verse 13, Paul says, this whole idea of being represented by someone is actually great news because it then sets up the way to our salvation. 
Paul reasons if the whole world was put under sin by one man, then what if salvation could come about for everyone through one man also? And that's exactly where Paul goes next. Verses 14 through 17, if you'll read in your insert, Paul tells us that Adam and Jesus are alike in their action, in that their action has implications for the whole human race. But they are also different. The motivation behind what they did was different. The first Adam selfishly disobeyed God and ate from the forbidden tree, bringing a curse on earth. The second Adam sacrificially obeyed God and climbed up onto a cursed tree to take that curse onto himself. Did you hear that? Let me read that again. The second Adam sacrificially obeyed God and climbed up onto a cursed tree to take that curse into himself. The curse that was on us, he took into himself. The first Adam brought death upon the whole human race. The second Adam restored life to all who would receive it. We were condemned through the actions of a representative who did what any of us in his situation would have done. But now we are saved through a representative who did what none of us could have done and none of us can do. And by the way, this idea of representatives acting on behalf of the people is alluded to throughout the Old Testament in the sacrificial system. It was a a representative lamb who died on behalf of the people. David defeats Goliath all by himself as a representative of the Israelite people as they stood terrified on the sidelines. All of these point to the ultimate representative who would win the ultimate battle for us. And then verse 18, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. Just like death came through a representative, life comes through a representative. Now you see that phrase, life for all men, and you say, does that mean that everyone will be saved? Just like through Adam's sin, we were all automatically made sinners. Maybe through Christ's sacrifice, we are all automatically saved. I don't want to bust your bubble. Not everyone is automatically saved. The offer is there for everyone. The gift is made available for everyone, but it has to be received. That would contradict, if everyone was saved, that would contradict too many other things that Paul and others have said. Just a little side note on interpreting Scripture. When you get to a difficult verse that you're having trouble interpreting, use not as difficult verses to interpret the difficult verse. And one verse can never go against all of Scripture, ever. Paul shares too many times that this is a gift that is offered but has to be received. Sincere faith has to be present to lay hold of righteousness. And I'm going to say something that some of you are not going to like and some of your friends think is really cool. Just, we talked about this in confirmation class this morning too. When we take our vows of membership in the church, we promise that we we have made a decision to put our whole faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior and as our, say it, Lisa, as our, I thought you were mouthing it, and as our Lord two parts. We love the Savior part, don't we? We love the Savior part. I can be saved. I don't have to go to hell. I've got my fire insurance card right here. But that Lord part, we are not so sure about. That Lord part means he takes over all of our life, not just a slice of the pie when it's easy and it's on Sunday morning, but when you're at work and that coworker is about to drive you into insanity, 
God still is over that. At school, when you are struggling with the people and the teachers and everything about it, God is still over all of that. He is Lord and Savior, not just Savior. Paul even alludes to this in the passage in verse 17. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Those who receive means that not everyone will receive it. It's like an invitation that has been extended to everyone. Everyone has the invitation, but you have to RSVP. You have to receive it and agree to it and profess it with your mouth and your heart. What Paul is saying is there are two family lines, one from Adam and one from Jesus. And you have to choose Team Adam or Team Jesus. You are on one or the other. You are either one with Adam in his sin and condemnation or one with Jesus in his submission to the Father and then eternal life. Who are you one with? And I know you're saying, well, I don't like it that I get included in Adam's choice. Well, now you have the chance to reverse that. Now you have the choice to say, I no longer am part of Adam's choice. What are you going to do? That's the question for each of us. Listen, church, the whole world is guilty of the sin of the first Adam. They have all ratified his decision at one time or another in their life, and the whole world needs to hear of the salvation and the redemption available in the second Adam. But they have to choose it. They have to choose it. God has already made a way. God has already made a way for them to be saved, but they have to choose. And then Paul says this, but where sin increased, thank you, Herb, grace abounded all the more. How much good news is that? No matter how dark or bad the sin, God's grace is even greater. Verse 21, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There it is, our Lord. Translation, God has provided already everything necessary for the salvation of the whole human race. There is only, listen, church, there's only one race of people. Only one race of people, and that is the sons and the daughters of the Creator God. And we are all created in the image of that one God. And we all have the same problem, sin. But God has sent a second Adam to redeem, and he's sufficient to save all the sons and the daughters of Adam and Eve. He died for all of them. He took their thorns, and he waits for them in the garden, and he wants to breathe life into their nostrils, the very breath of life. And I'll leave you with this. I saw on the internet a video, and I absolutely love it, and I don't know who said it. I would give full credit, and I don't know the man's name, but he said this, I can't wait to find that fellow one day, speaking of the, the third criminal on the cross, the second criminal on the cross, I can't wait to find that fellow one day, the thief on the cross, to ask him this, how did all of that shake out for you? Because you were cussing the guy out with your friend. You've never been in a Bible study. You never got baptized. You didn't know a thing about church membership. And yet, you made it. You didn't know any of that stuff. And yet, you made it. You made it. How did you make it? 
How did you do it? And I can imagine that's what the angel must have said when he gets up to the gates and the angel meets him and he's like, you know, like, what are you doing here? And the thief says, I don't know. And the angel says, what do you mean you don't know? Well, because I don't know. And the angel says, well, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, well, excuse me, let me go get my supervisor. And the supervisor angel comes back and he goes and he says, so just a few questions for you. First of all, are you clear on the doctrine of justification by faith? And the guy says, never heard of it in my entire life. And the supervisor angel says, well, what about then, well, uh, well, let's just skip right to uh, the doctrine of Scripture immediately. And the guy just stares at him. And eventually, in frustration, the angel says, on what basis are you here then? On what basis are you here? And the man on the middle cross said, the, the, the thief said, I don't know. Just the man on the middle cross said that I can come. And that is the only answer. The only answer. But we have to choose. Remember, there were two other people besides Jesus. One received and one, as far as we know, didn't. And the one ended up with Jesus in paradise. It's always offered to us all, but we have to receive. So the question this morning is, who are you going to be one with? Are you going to be one with the first Adam? Or are you going to be one with the man on, in, on the middle cross? It's your choice. The second Adam on the middle cross. The second Adam who did what you can't do so that you could have what he has. Redemption and righteousness and eternal life with the creator of the universe. And that's the only way and that's the only answer. Who are you going to be one with? It's your choice. Gracious and loving God, this morning, thank you for your word. The gift of your son, so unselfishly given on that cross to do what we could never do, so that the offer of redemption and salvation would be available to each and every one of us, that your son would reverse the curse. So each one of us today, what is our choice? And may we look to you and you alone. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In the name of your precious son, amen. As we prepare to um, sing our closing song this morning, I would invite anyone who's been visiting and would like to join the church to come forward during this song, and we'll make that happen. Or if you're watching online and would like to join, you can click on the uh, uh, membership below the video. Best Sugar, Reverend Best Sugar's information should be on the screen at this time. And you can contact her and she'll make sure that happens. So with that, I invite you to stand as you're able and join us in the singing of our closing song this morning.
where Jesus was forsaken. So I will never be. His grace is my salvation, the gift of God, the work of Calvary. It is. Go ahead and have a seat as we run through a couple of announcements. Um, I'll try and be as brief as possible this morning. Um, thank you. 
First thing I want to do um, is announce Vacation Bible School. Um, you'll see that in your supplement. If you didn't get one, come in and get one. Um, you need this. There's a ton of stuff in there. Um, and also go to the website, DuluthUMC.org, um, for all the stuff, too. But Vacation Bible School Stellar, that will be June 12th through the 16th. Online registration is open now. It, the, the link will, uh, you can go there, everything's working, get your child signed up. If you want to volunteer, sign up. If you want to volunteer your youth to come and, and, and help, sign them up too. Without their knowledge, that's okay. You still run their life, so you can sign them up and, and have them do it. Um, but you can go to, um, it's at the, the church website, correct, Leslie? DuluthUMC.org, and you can find it on the home page, I'm assuming, and you can get there and click on the link and sign up. Thank you, Leslie, for staying. If you have any questions, find her and ask her. She's the one with all the answers. Um, I do want to uh, bring your attention to this. Uh, you can order your Easter lilies um, that will be placed here on Easter in here and in the sanctuary. And um, you can do those in memory of someone or in honor of someone. And all the money that is, is, is brought in for, through the sales of our Easter lilies goes towards our Seeds of Hope Fund, which is then used to assist those in need of um, groceries, of gas, maybe some rent, those type of things, but that and medical expenses, those things, those are what we use Seeds of Hope for. This helps fund Seeds of Hope. If that's something you would like to donate to, you can catch me later and I can tell you how to do that also. Um, and then on Easter, for Easter coming up, Holy Week and Easter, there's a whole schedule in here of Easter morning um, on in the supplement, but we do want to highlight Good Friday, the Tenebrae service on April 7th, and that will be at 7 o'clock in the sanctuary. Good Friday, 7 o'clock p.m., the Tenebrae service, and then on Easter morning, there will be a 7 a.m. sunrise service uh, with communion on the, um, uh, I don't know what to call it, kind of the, 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 the concrete entry, the way to the sanctuary up front out there. They will have chairs and things out there on Easter morning at 7 o'clock. And then at 11 o'clock, we will have worship in here for Easter and in the sanctuary um, at 11 o'clock. Either one of those services for Easter morning. I think that's it. Ken, did I hit them all? Man, I hit them all. We good? Would you stand for our benediction and our sending forth? As we go from this place, may we go as God's children, as sons and daughters of God. The offer is there for us all. Who are we going to walk with? And may we share God's love with all those that we come into contact with in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love y'all. If you would, help us stack chairs. Um, I would also ask you this, that if there's anybody that would like to help supply donuts on a weekly basis, maybe once a month, once every six weeks, let me know, and um, I'll get a schedule put together. Thank y'all. And thank you.